So this is a, a, a quick talk. I um, It was triggered a couple of weeks ago by um, a Slack conversation about having to update a whole bunch of sites due to a, a course um, security release. And the, I think the, the conversation was kind of like, you know, sad face, sad face. I have to update now. This is really painful. And um, then we kind of got it discussing that, well, we've, We've been doing at previous next. We've been doing kind of automated updates on a regular basis for some time, and I thought it was probably just worth sharing um, our experience and our um, our approach to doing things. And I kind of tried to make it sound really interesting by the by the talk um, title, just because the actual solution is really really simple. It's not it's not complicated at all. Um, so uh, hopefully this will make it more enticing when you're looking at it later. <laughs> um, so yeah, so just to kind of go through the, the, the first, um, the first points, I guess, are, um, for a lot of people, updates can be time consuming. You know, if you've got, you know, 10 sites or 20 sites, even just a handful of sites, um, when, when you need to go and do updates, um, it can take a good chunk of time. Um, it's not usually an interesting thing to do just to be out, just to have to do security updates. You, you know, most people would much rather spend their time on, you know, building new features or delivering value to their clients rather than kind of just maintaining their sites and, and um, updating them. So it's not interesting work. Um, and then updates can also break things. So, you know, if you if you you do a you do an update, it has an unexpected change in there, or your code was relying on a particular feature that's changed, then you know you want to you want to kind of be aware of things that are going to break, and those those things that when that happens, like that can actually be time consuming in in fixing things, and um, so yeah, we want to try and solve that problem. Um, but updates are actually becoming more important now than they they were in the past. Um, I, you know, there are, there are work colleagues who used to, back in the day, like um, once they finished a project, never updated the site. If there was like even like minor security updates, they would basically assess them and go, oh, well, it's not applicable to us. Let's just skip it, um, regardless of all the warnings and so on going on in, inside the, the Drupal status report. Um, but now we're kind of being forced to update more frequently. Um, you know, the recent um, Drupal 9 release really showed that um, it wasn't just security updates that were forcing us to upgrade, it was um, removing deprecated code so that the modules could be compatible with, with Drupal 9. Um, and also we've got underlying frameworks that we're relying on, and they're actually increasing their release cadences as well. So. We rely heavily on Symphony. That's being updated at a more frequent pace. PHP is being upgraded at a more frequent pace. That's forcing other things to to update as well. So um, if things like PHP Unit, they're, they're just they're just being updated more and more frequently. So we need to be able to to manage this somehow. Um, so yeah, you don't want to fall behind. You want to be able to keep your head above water and um, and kind of roll with these with this um, new flow of, of updates that are required. Um, and we actually have a bit of a, a philosophy or a mantra in in internally here at Previous Next, which is always be updating. And every time someone's like complaining they've got to do something and they haven't updated, it's like just got to try and get into this mentality of like just be updating all the time. And of course. We want to remove the um, we want to remove the the, the busy work, the, the kind of labour out of that um, out of that, so that we can be always be updating without having to carry all the you know the baggage and 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 just streamline the things as much as possible. Um, so we've we've had a uh, a product called Patchy for for a while. It's like it, it, what, it began its life as a kind of a product. When I say product, I mean it was a tool. Um, back in the day when we were doing Drupal 7 updates, 
Um, we wrote something that would kind of scan um, module files or mo uh, info files and call APIs and do all this kind of stuff and then generate like, um, gener uh, actually do the updates for us. But um, since Drupal's all moved to Composer, it's actually now just reduced down to a, a, a bash script. So it's, it's actually more, more of a bash script than a product these days. Uh, but we still call it patchy and um, it's, it's more of a concept. So whenever we're talking about builds, it'd be like the patchy build or the, you know, the patchy script just to everybody knows what we're talking about. Um, so the overall goals of patchy um, is that updates are automated. So we want to want to remove any of the manual toil um, that's involved as much as possible. Um, we kind of need to rely on automated tests to give us confidence that updates haven't broken the site. So we do we like if you if you haven't if you're not doing automated testing, this and uh, this kind of workflow kind of requires. Um, some level of automated test just to be able to catch things that might um, break your site just from doing automated updates. Um, and instead of just updating like security releases, we just update everything. Um, and the, the reason I've got the little asterisk there is um, because like when I say update everything, I don't mean like jump you know, major versions all the time, every, every time you're doing it. It just means that you're, you are, you need to be more careful about what you put in your composer JSON um, to your requirements, your version requirements, um, to make sure that you're confident that, you know, you can safely update to newer versions of that, whether it's like you're saying, I, I, I can safely update patch versions or minor versions or even major versions, but just make sure that you, you it focuses your attention a bit more on those those version constraints. Um, and lastly, update often. So we know that um, you know core security updates are Thursdays, you know, on Thursday mornings, once a month, contrib updates. Uh, the other two weeks, we we basically just have like a, a weekly schedule on a Thursday morning that just um, goes and, and runs patchy. Um, but you could do this, uh, you could do this daily if you really wanted to, depending on how much you know overhead that that brings. Uh, and the idea, of course, is to fail fast. So one of the arguments I've heard from people is, well, if we're updating all the time, it's just going to break things. Well, the reality is it's going to break things anyway. It's just going to it's going to break things earlier where you can catch things and have time to um, to kind of decide what you want to do with things. Um, as in, do you want to do you need to to fix your own code or do you need to um, you know does a contrib module need a patch or whatever it might be? Um, but you you know early it, it's not going to be when you're trying to you know, you're hitting a hard deadline to get a feature out onto the site and you run into, uh, uh, you know, an upgrade that you need to bump up the version and then you fail, then you've got to scramble to try and fix things. So the earlier you kind of hit your failures, the kind of smoother the, the road is. Um, so I'm going to just, I'm going to get into the, the actual, the script a bit and just talk about, um, how it's all set up. So we're, we're relying on a, a CI CD. So we use Circle CI here. Um, we used to run Jen our own Jenkins. It doesn't really matter. You can, this will work on, this approach will work on any um, CI platform. Um, a couple of the, the key things that we, we use are you need a GitHub token with push access because we're actually going to be you know, creating a pull request on each project. Um, and the hub command line tool is um, GitHub's command line tool. I think they bring out a new one soon, but this is what we're using. Because um, that just that just makes creating a, a pull request a bit easier. Um, we're obviously, everything relies on it being Composer now. Um, a couple of other things that are really handy are um, a pre-built dev database image. So I believe um, Nick Santa Maria did a talk on this a while ago, I think, but um, 
it's basically what I don't I don't think everyone will have this, but we're we're taking our, our database image from dev and then nightly taking a snapshot sanitizing the database and then creating a docker image out of it and then that means that when we do when we run our cic um, our pipelines we're actually using like a, a recent snapshot of the database that um, is safe to be used on something like circle ci and then finally there's a another tool called composer lock diff and that just is a nice way of printing out all the changes that you've made by doing a composer update. Um, so for setup, as I said, we're using Circle CI. Um, you need to, you'll, typically you'll need to generate a new private key. Well, that's the safest thing to do. And we, we've got like a bot account on GitHub. Um, so you need to add it to that. And then you need to add your SSH private key into Circle CI um, for that that domain that just allows you to, to push, and then this is the uh, Circle CI config. Um, I'm not sure how many people are using Circle CI, but it's quite a flexible tool. This is just simply the the Circle CI workflow part, where we're basically saying there's one job, and we're just going to run it every uh, every Wednesday morning. Oh, sorry, every Thursday morning at like eight o'clock in the morning, just running on the master branch. So basically. All our patchy builds are just whatever's on on master, which is our like our dev dev branch. And then the job itself again is really simple. Um, some of this stuff is more details of what we're using, but it depends on what images you're using for your own builds. But all you really need to know is that we will need a will need a an image that can actually um, connect to a database and a, and a database image. So. Instead of having a pre-built database image here, you might, you know, pull in a, a, a you know, SQL file and then load it or do something like that. But the general idea is that we'll need a running Drupal site um, to be able to run our, our update on it. Um, and the rest of it is not in Circle CI YAML. It's actually in a Bash script, um, which I'll I'll talk about in a sec. So. Um, this is essentially just a run through of what the bash script is doing at a, at a conceptual level. So um, there's not that many steps. Basically, it fits on one slide. <laughs> so we just need to set the user um, that to that bot user, the one that we've set up the SSH key for. We check out a new branch. We run composer update. Um, we just check if that generated a a diff in composer lock, as in, were there any changes? Because sometimes there's not, depending on how many dependency you've got, there might not be any, anything new. Um, uh, if there is, then we'll just commit that to that, that Git repo. We'll then, this is where we need a running Drupal site because we'll run Drush update DB. Um, that basically is there for, um, if there's any uh, config schema changes, those kinds of things, um, that will that will happen in the database, and then we'll do a Drush config export. Uh, so the idea is that um, we want to try and capture any of those Drupal updates where the config has changed. Um, then we just check if there is. We, once we've done our export in whatever your config sync directory is called. Um, if there's any changes in there, then we'll commit that. And then we just do a git push and we create a new pull request. And that's pretty much it. That's patchy. Um, I do actually have the, the bash here. I don't know whether how useful that is for people to read, but like there is, um, there's a bit more detail in here. You can see um, there's a couple of nice little tricks in here, like the checking if the composer lock um, has changed. There's like a um, there's a git diff files command there that you can that you can use in in Bash to, to kind of let you have that um, control flow. Um, we're we're creating a um, a commit message into a little temp file, and then we're we're using that composer lock diff command to to print out like a a nicely formatted markdown. Um, version of what's old, what's changed, um, and then 
we we use make as a as a script, but whatever you're using, we just we're just running the these commands: config import, update db, and config export again. And then you can see we're committing our changes and then creating a new pull request. Um, so yeah, and that's that's what you get. So every morning at eight o'clock, you get a new pull request on your um, on your GitHub repo. And you'll get something that's printed out like this, where it's essentially, here's all the changes. Um, I, I probably should have mentioned that when I do a, an update, uh, a, a proposed update, um, yeah, it's, it's updating everything. So every sub-modules and whatnot get, um, oh, sorry, um, dependencies of dependencies will get updated here. We just do everything. Um, and you can actually go and see, see exactly what's changed. Um, if there were config changes, then that would obviously come up as a, as another commit that would be in here. I'd say nine times out of ten, there aren't any config changes, and usually it's just simple dependency updates like that. Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much it. So um, I don't know if we've got any time for questions, but I thought um, it was worth showing you that um, you know, like there are there are commercial products out there that do this for you. I know that um, GitHub's got Dependabot now. It does something similar, but more on an individual um, dependency basis. But to actually do this is not terribly complicated, and everyone can have automated updates uh, on a weekly basis. And yeah, d don't have to go through that pain of, uh, um, of when security releases out, having to feel like you've got a huge burden. So thanks. Are there any questions? Uh, what about automated testing? If if uh, if it does break, how do you then discover that it's there's a problem with the site? Uh, because okay, so because we're just creating a pull request, we're not running tests in this patchy build. All its job is basically just to run composer update and then create a new pull request, and then we're assuming that our pull request has its own order. It, each every pull request has its own the the set of automated tests that run. So yeah, often I mean, if you if your composer update breaks something, then your automated test should should fail, and then you've got to obviously jump in manually and resolve things or work out why it's failed. But um, you know that the idea is that you're you should be running this regularly enough that um, you know simple updates shouldn't uh, shouldn't break things all the time. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, that's that's it. And and as you say, you know, the the little updates rarely break break things. Yeah. Uh, Kim, is there a cost across all of the Circle CI instances because they're private? Is there sorry costs? Is there a cost for you for the Circle CI? Uh, look, I don't know. I think I don't think so. I mean, we we. Our, the Circle CI plans are by the compute unit now, so yeah, there is some cost, but minimal, really. It's, it's not much. Yeah, so I mean, the, the the cost of Circle CI, the benefits of that far outweigh the manual effort of going in and having to manually, you know, do updates and push your own pull requests. So yeah, the idea is that people, yeah, we have. Um, we have project maintainers, and they'll come in on a Thursday morning of a you know a course security update. There should be pull requests all sitting there waiting for them. Most of the time, they're just green, like, and they can just go, yeah, there's a small change. It's passed all the tests already, and just merge and then get on with doing deployments and things like that. So um, it should, should be minimal effort. Thanks very much. Thanks, Kim. Yeah, thanks, Kim. That was good. Just uh...